record this. Thank you very much. The recording is in progress. And here we are. This is uh, the day before the 4th of July. By the way, uh, Charlene said she wasn't, wasn't going to call today because she has to go to the fair with her grandchildren. See, that's the problem with having grandchildren is you have to miss this show. Let that be a lesson to the rest of you. Oh, wait a minute. A lot of you have those kind of little creatures in your life. Let me see here. Let me go and admit all the people that are here now, which is Marjorie Miller and Paul Levin and Jeffrey Stein and Andrew Deutsch and Edward Berger. That's right. Wallace and uh, Jeff Stein. Uh, let's see. Len LaFrisco is there. There we go. What, what happened to uh, Deutsch? Huh. Andrew Deutsch. Okay, I, I sometimes when we get more than a couple of people here, I have a hard time seeing who's here exactly. You, I'm here. You, you can't, know. you can't see me. I'm in witness protection. <laughs> he, he's in the, uh, he's in the what do you call it? The, uh, the uh, uh, Charlene Square. That's usually the square that Charlene comes up in. So, how dare she? She isn't going to be here today because she's got grandkids to take to the fair god how dare she have a life huh what you how dare she have a life yeah how dare she have a life how dare she have a family you know between marjorie and i you know how many grandchildren we have between the two of us zero <laughs> and, and we have seven marriages between us we have seven marriages between us i got three three grandkids you got three charlie's grandkids. got a bunch no, I don't. Really? I thought your daughter had kids. No. And mine are what 14, 6, and gonna be a year in August. Yeah, how about uh how about you, Bender? A burger, rather. I, no, I just have nieces and nephews. Oh, just, just nieces and nephews, you see. Did you ever get married? Uh no. No, so you're the one here that never got married. You're the smartest one of us all. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Now, is it, financially solvent too. What is the reason <laughs> for never getting married? Nobody wanted to marry you. That's right. I found you need somebody else to do this. You can't do it yourself. <laughs> uh, you see, we never ask him much on the show. He just sits there and watches. But when we get him to talk, it's fu funnier than any of us. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just choose not to get married? I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it's just just better that way. Well, well, you know, here's the thing, the, except with the exception of the marriage between Marjorie and I, yeah. all our marriages were failures. Uh huh. So we shouldn't have gotten married in the first place, right? That's right. Waited for this. That's right. No, it just took you a while to get it right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Practice well, makes perfect or perfect. Of us still working Practice. on it. Did your did your uh, did uh, Marjorie did all your husbands? Uh, no, your husbands. Did, did you did you divorce them or did one? I think one died, didn't he? He died much after we got divorced. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Well, I would have figured maybe suicide. You know. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm just so <laughs> I'm so mean. Well, here we go. We got you see. A few less people today because people are probably out getting ready to having yeah. lives. Yeah. <laughs> having lives. Well, it's a question of what do we do on the Fourth of July here in New York? Now we could go out to Fire Island, but you know what's out in Fire Island right now? Everybody who was in New York. <laughs> you know, so why not stay in New York? Because it's relatively, you know, it is relatively empty. Quiet, yeah. Yeah. But I thought Fire Island was the new name for Canada. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> by the way, by the way, I just saw our uh, we have a a, a, a a breathing alert until oh. about midnight tonight here in Manhattan. So apparently the fires are coming our way again. As I'm gone. The other night, I looked up at the moon, and it was a red moon because it was looking through the haze of the uh, the fire. So you know, it's uh, so anyway. So tomorrow's the Fourth of July, and mm -hmm. I think we perhaps should maybe what I like to do this time of the year 
is make an assessment of the United States of America and where it is exactly. Hmm. And what do we see on TV today? Some guy who's with some organization uh, that uh, assesses things around the world, and they've decided the United States isn't what it once was. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> really, he said that, and he said that he uh, they decided that uh, the United States was on a watch list of nations who are deeply in peril of losing their democracy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's happening. If Trump gets elected, next not going to. It's gone. But if he, it's Trump. gone. It's gone. Yeah, you know. I mean, thank God Marjorie and I are of the age where we won't have to put up with it for very long. But uh, or I mean, probably most of us won't have to deal with it much, but our children will, their children's children will. And, and certainly if you do have grandkids, those grandkids are, are not going to be living in the America we signed up for. So it's kind of sad. And also it's the divisiveness in the country. They were saying it's a real problem. But this was a country of of great democracy and democratic values and that it's completely, you know, you don't have to be right or left to have Democrat, you know, really uh, decent values about this country, but we don't. He said uh, it was a land of terrorists. It was a land of terrorists. Is that what yeah. he said? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Let's see all your whole face uh, there, Jeff. I'm here. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, there you there go. You Oh God! Let let's see half your face again. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I got another face, just in case. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you have to have both ears to be on this show. Uh, okay. Oh. I'm drinking five day old coffee. Ooh. Is that okay. disgusting? I, I don't drink a whole cup of coffee, and I decided. Why am I always making new cups of coffee? So I put it in the refrigerator, and then when I get, uh, get out, I throw it in the microwave. It warms up. It's just as good as it was the day before. It sounds disgusting. <laughs> really, there's no sludge in here or anything. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And it keeps me awake, you know. Did you drink day-old coffee at Starbucks? Well, I, well, I don't go to starbucks and expect day old coffee but if i came home and i didn't drink all of it i might put it in the refrigerator and then warm it up later doesn't anybody warm coffee. up warm up coffee oh, sure i'll warm it up yeah I know. no no you just like to use up all the water in our brewer brewer and you like to uh <laughs> sound like foster brooks <laughs> eat up all the k cups well, you notice I haven't been using as many K-cups lately because I do this. See? I finish my cup, Alex, every day. Every day you finish it. But you only do one now. You used to yeah. do two. I can't do two anymore. Why is that? Wow. I'm just puffy it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, so, I, you know, here we are. It's uh, 4th of July tomorrow. Anybody doing anything special? I'm with my niece. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. And how old is your niece? Oh, I'm she's 50. But <laughs> I'm up at her house. I'm, I'm thinking know. of a guy who says, Fourth of July, I'm going to be with my niece. I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, taking, she's my niece. What, taking, what can I do? Like Charlene taking the kid to a fair, buying her balloons, you know, things like no, that. She, and then you just, say 50 and it blows the whole vision. Well, what can I do? You know. <laughs> That's what she was. She was assigned to me as my niece. So I have to refer to everything, you know. She was assigned to you as your Yeah, niece. I can't I can't change her into something else. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She nice, good person. Yeah. No, of course. What do you mean? Of course she could have been a son of a bitch. Well then I wouldn't be up at her house. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. Is it where's the, is Andrew Deutsch still there or is he out for a moment? I guess he's out for a moment. Yeah, he hasn't stepped away. But he hasn't stepped away. But uh, yeah. we don't have we don't have uh, um, some of the regulars here today, you know, because it's the day before Fourth of July. But I do this anyway. I'd be here if it was only Marjorie. And, well, no, I wouldn't do it. No, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know what? So anybody doing anything special? You doing anything, Len? 
and uh, got some friends coming over. We're going to just have a swim in the pool and do some hot dogs and hamburgers. Okay, well, then that's doing something. That's typical Fourth of July, Jeff. We can't see you again. Move the camera again. There you go. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, oh, I know. The hands going gone. like this. You know. What? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to Massachusetts to see my daughter. Yeah. And her kids and her husband. Mm -hmm. How old your do How old your daughter now? I think she's getting closer to fifty. Oh, <laughs> she can, then she could meet. Um, right. <laughs> Yeah, she lives near Connecticut. She should meet burgers. Uh, no, she's in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Okay. Gee. You're just going up for the day? Yeah, we're going to go for the day. Yeah. See what they're doing. And how many kids does she have? Two, uh, I'll, say, I'll call them teenagers. One is in college, and the youngster is in high school. So there are four of them. There are four of them? No. Well, there's there's other. My son has two girls also. Okay. So I got four granddaughters. Oh, well, four granddaughters, and how many grandsons? Any? No. What is wrong with your family? But I have, <laughs> I have a son, and I have two sons actually. Well, that's fine, but they don't have. They all have. They all have girls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. In, in scientifically, are more girls born than men or are the other way around? Yeah. There more, more women, women, yeah. Really? More women to men. Well, that's probably because they don't drown women any. They don't drown little girls anymore. So there's more than that survive, right? You know, that's when society started falling apart. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, meanwhile, uh, I will. I have a a balcony, and my balcony overlooks uh, across the street a country club. And at the country club, they do um, fireworks oh, on the Fourth of July. So all we have to do, um, uh, I'll have some some uh, friends and relatives coming over, and all we have to do is go out on the balcony and enjoy the fireworks. It's really quite nice. Yeah. Well, all we have to do is look out our window at our neighborhood, and we can see the fireworks. This in is our true. Neighborhood. <laughs> Every day. Oh, really? Tomorrow night, you can bet your life this whole neighborhood will be just. Yeah. They've yeah. started already. Fire yeah, here too. Well, they yeah. they started with fireworks, not fireworks, but you know, firecrackers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I heard what seemed to be some fireworks the other night, but I couldn't see them out the windows. So. I saw them. They're in the street. They were little ones. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And and the cops don't do anything to stop it, you know. Well, that's just you noisy. Buy them, that, right? That's hey, not. Listen, I don't. I don't mind if they do it one day a year. I don't mind if they do it maybe two days a year. But they were like a couple of years ago. It was like they started in March. <laughs> and, and then i was told this was happening all over the country i talked to people in california it was happening yeah. in california it was happening in, it was happening in texas yeah there was a, i think a rash of illegal fireworks that came into this country uh they were dangerous to use too because they had fentanyl in them <laughs> <laughs> those are those are those ones that hunter biden brought over from Yes, of course. he's being investigated. Well, you know, the weather is just terrible, uh, terribly. Hot. It's getting hot here, and we're blaming that on Hunter Biden. <laughs> Don Giller's joining us. Hey. Yeah, Don. You, did you know the history of the Ohio liar's law for fireworks? No. They had fireworks stores all over the state. You could buy them, but you had to sign a paper agreeing that you're taking them out of the state to light them. Oh, you had to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was the law for years, and now the state finally legalized fireworks, but every municipality can opt out. So there's no municipality within, I think, I well, think 20, 30 I minutes of my house where you're allowed to shoot fireworks. What I like about people with these fireworks is that once they lose their fingers, it's very hard for them to steal your wallet. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there's no, no better way of saying what a great countryman you are but than blowing shit up. So Yeah, yeah. Hello there, Don Giller. How are you? Hello there. Uh, is Alex? Is that it? Alex? It's Alex. It's okay. Alex. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. No, last week you gave me so much lip about uh, not having enough faith in myself as a human being. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, uh, I, I don't have the faith, but I 
owed you a visit. You would call this show and uh, and attempt it. I wouldn't say attentive. Uh, attempt it. Attempt it. Oh, attempt it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best I'm going to do. Yeah. Anyway, hi, how are you? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I'd like to ask Don a question. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. What what is going on behind you there? You know, I, what, what? <laughs> it looks, uh, it looks interesting and very disorganized. What is it? A potential fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's stuff uh, that I that I have no space to to uh, to move anywhere else. Um, uh, there are uh, 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 videotapes, DVDs, books. Uh, Probably a dead rabbit that I know smells. <laughs> something smells funny. And I don't any know. any manifestos? <laughs> a lot of those are tapes, Letterman shows, things like that. Yeah, yeah, they, they kind of all are. How many rooms do you have in your apartment? Uh, three. Three. So you have a lot of room for all this stuff. I, I call them corridors. <laughs> <laughs> because no. we watch this guy. We watch this guy every day. His name is Cash Jordan. He's on YouTube, and every day he goes and visits an apartment. So people low rent, yeah. low rent apartments. People some like them are low rent. Some, some of them are for kids coming right out of college and need their first apartment. Yeah, but anyway, so he 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 shows these apartments, and there's like, oh, here, this one is 100 square feet, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's only three thousand dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> and Marjorie and I are looking at each other and saying. I guess we're just spoiled. Yeah. Because we have 2,500 square feet for $500 and seven cents a month. <laughs> and so How long have you lived there? there? Huh? How long How have you lived there? there? We've lived here since the 1800s. Almost 12 years. 12 years? Almost. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I've, I've been here since 79. Um, and at the time, it was uh, three hundred twenty-five dollars a month. Okay, and you're stabilized, uh, right? It. I'm sorry. You're stabilized, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's so, now twelve hundred. Well, it's now twelve hundred, and you moved in in seventy-nine for three. Yeah. So, so I could not afford to go anywhere else. That's not, no, of course not. It's like yeah. this place because of the rent we've got. Even if they raised it to like you know more, uh, we wouldn't give it up. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we we might. <clears throat> If I get some money, I'm supposed to get. Uh, uh, we might, we could afford to buy something if we wanted to. But this place, we would never leave. It's Fine. perfect. Well, it's perfect. Ooh, leave. Yeah. Well, if if you do get another space, uh, make sure you get a room for storage because I'd love to store this stuff somewhere. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we uh, we can't move out of this apartment. We just can't. I mean, they're going to have to take us out of here in a coffin. In a coffin. That's how I'm leaving. You know, uh, <laughs> and because there's no way I we're we're getting leaving this apartment. We have too much stuff here. I can't get rid of it. What do I do? Just look at this. Well, you can't see it, but look at this room. <laughs> that room. Just all pretty. the equipment alone wouldn't fit in a in a, in a two bedroom apartment. You know. Have you watched all those movies behind you? No. And then some. <laughs> no. And if you had asked Shecky if he had watched the 10,000 DVDs he owned and watched all of them, he would tell you, no. It was a certain, there was a certain idiocy that he and I both engaged in, in collecting in movies on, on movies. At one point, we were collecting them on laser disc. You know how well, I can those can remember were? when we first moved in, I had those two boxes and I gave them away. Yeah. Yeah. What am I going to do with all well, those I gave away most of my most of my uh, uh, laser discs as well. I have a couple that are very valuable because they have certain commentaries on them and so on. But outside of that, I didn't get I got rid of them. And and really, what do I need the DVDs for? I mean, there are certain spaces in this uh, in the DVDs where I have put them on computer, uh, and. Um, but then I got tired of doing that because, you know, it's it's real time putting them on a computer. But I would rather have everything on uh, computer files than, you know, the physical disk because owning it is just insanity. And I told Shecky when he had all these, I said, 
what's going to happen when you die? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm planning on seeing him you die. Get That's what happens. <laughs> you Is get the no? drives. No, but I said, what happens when when uh, when he when you die? Where do all these DVDs go? He says, in the dumpster out, outside that they're going to pull up and fill up. <laughs> And pretty much, I mean, I, I don't know what they're going to do with all his DVDs because I don't even think colleges will take them. They don't need them. They get all, all the stuff on uh, files. It's weird. it's weird. Randy told me that um, Randy, who's cleaning up Rick's place, um, yeah. told me that uh, nothing will end up in the dumpster. Nothing will end up in landfill. So she she gets it. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. But, Be but, sure. So it will go to somebody. No, even well, there is stuff. There are DVDs that I don't know. Will, will schools accept them today? Libraries you know, will take stuff. I mean, he does have some that are, you know, he got stuff that was very rare. Okay, uh, but uh, and I wouldn't know which those are. But most of them were kind of stuff like mine. And if I tried to get rid of all of this, and I said, "Come get them," nobody would come get them. I have space. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Well, come on over. Oh, wait, but we got to get you out of the house first, don't we? Hey, well, according, we according to Shecky's will, Alex, don't answer your door. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> you well, said I, that that you were you were digitizing your DVDs in real time. Well, they did. They don't. Di you can't digitize them at triple speed. No, but you can. I mean, I I did I convert DVDs to MP4 files using an MP4 file conversion. Yeah. So that an hour DVD will take maybe 20 minutes. Oh, really? I find an hour takes to convert. Hour. And and you're not watching it. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's not easy though. It, and it's time consuming. Um, yeah. okay, so let's say you can do it in a in a third of the time. So three DVDs are gonna take you two if if they have if they're two hour movies, gonna take you an hour. Yeah, but still that's well. It, I, I, I I understand. It's a lot I, of. I get I get I get exhausted by by the amount of stuff that I still have to do in terms of converting. Yeah. So I know the I know the overwhelmingness of it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but uh, uh, you know, Shecky had uh, I you know I got Shecky's uh, hard drives, and I'm still going through them. I mean, he kept everything. Have you found the databases? No, yeah. no, no. She hasn't either. <laughs> but um, who knows? May I be on one of these discs? I mean, it I'm, may be all, It may be on. Mm -hmm. He had drive. this little. He had this little. You know, little hard drive. You know, the ones that you just stick on your yeah. USB port and whatever. And I went there. I can't believe the amount of stuff that's on that disc. I mean, and and old stuff. You know. Uh, I, I, uh, Eddie Cantor in Alabama goes to town, you know, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Is it in any sequence, any order, uh, chronological? Just uh, alphabetical. Oh, okay. And, but, but, but some of them are brand new, like 1977. That's yeah. brand new. Uh, <laughs> and others are like silent films. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's amazing how much stuff. I, I, I'd say I have at least. 20,000 movies and TV shows. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. And how many of those could you find them on the internet easily? How many, how many could I find on the internet? Yeah, what would you send it to the things that you uh, I, Probably not on the internet, but for instance, uh, you have Turner Classic movies, and occasionally they'll show Alibaba comes to town with Al, with uh, with Eddie Cantor. Um, but um, Shecky took some of these movies off of TCM. I mean, he was just, he just had tape machines and uh, a vi vi a vi going constantly making copies of everything that was on. He would, he would go on a whole broadcast day of TCM and record every movie that they played. Yeah. I mean, he was nuts. Yeah. But he was recording onto DVD or onto onto VHS. I, uh, I, all this stuff, oh. all this stuff was on hard drive oh, okay. as files. Okay. Well, thank you. okay, but it doesn't, you know, it, it, if yeah. they're on files, that's fine. But they still, he had to get them from somewhere. So right. he recorded them first and then made them into a file. You know, 
I mean, I used to have a DVD recorder where you could record DVD discs mm -hmm. live off of something that was running. So, but he didn't have any of those that I could find. Mm -hmm. so, but I just figured I wanted them because I didn't want them to just, you know, hard drives, you can just get rid of them. I mean, th there's nothing on there that anybody doesn't have already of his. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just, this is all in one place. So, you know. But it's TV plus movies. It's a lot, a lot, some TV and mostly movies, mostly movies. I mean, today I found at least three movies with Martha Ray. Wow. Yeah. Singing. <laughs> she was great. She was terrific. Was, I remember her. She was, she sounded like Ella Fitzgerald, oddly enough. That's how good she was, you know. Really? You remember, Al, uh, 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 he says, it's his shirt says, I'm retired. What does the rest of it say? I can't this is read. As dressed up as I get. This is dressed <laughs> up as I get. Okay. But you retired. Do you remember Martha Ray? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. She, yeah, she's seen I'm old. Huh? Sorry. What were we going to say? Old. What were we going to say, Don? Oh, she, she sued Letterman because he made a joke about her being a. a uh, uh, she she had ads saying I'm a I'm a denture wearer, so Dave yeah. in one of his jokes said that uh, she was a condom user. Really? Yeah, and, and, she, even, and she she sued him. You know that's not even yeah. a joke worth being sued over. You know, uh, it was a cover up. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm I'm sure the suit was settled. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, but you know, the trouble is that you get these people that were very funny when they were young and very talented when they were young. When they get old, they get cranky, you know, and and they don't like you calling them anything. And then they say, oh, I'm going to sue you for that. But, you know, be a, be a good sport. Yeah. Let, me, let me find the figures if I can. The figures? Uh, the number of what she was suing over. Oh, really? You see, he has all of this. <laughs> By the way, he's another nutcase. Hey, yeah. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> no, I included my those. Look back here. This is just a little bit of it, okay? Tell me I'm not a nutcase. And I'm a minor nutcase compared to Shecky and probably a minor nutcase compared to you because I don't habitually collect stuff. I just ordered it and, you know, it came. I'm hanging up now. <laughs> she filed a ten million dollar slander lawsuit against wow. Letterman for saying against, that she against was Letterman Martha, for saying condom user. Martha Ray condom mm -hmm. user. Did that get on the air? Yeah. Um, I well, if it, if it I didn't, she wouldn't have sued him. Yeah. Now, what was did the, did you find any resolution of the case? Let's see. The judge says he is inclined to dismiss the suit and a final ruling is forthcoming. Uh -huh. Let's see something else here. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, satire is protect, protected speech, no? It, it is, I believe, in, all, uh, in most cases. Uh, what's his name? The guy from Hustler saying that what's his oh, name? Yeah. Uh, the well, the it, televangelist it, was screwing a chicken in the outhouse. What you know, the prove, Supreme Court ruled what, it for. <laughs> what you have to prove. In, if, if you're like Letterman in this case, is that no reasonable human being would consider that to be true. Yeah. Okay. And to say Martha Ray, the condom user, well, she's a woman. She isn't a condom user. This, this, is, this is 1987. Uh, the, the complaint says the remark implied that Ray, who turned 71 next week, was sexually promiscuous, had loose <laughs> morals, and had frequent sexual intercourse with people she believed to be infected with or exposed to the AIDS virus. Oh, wow. and, and and that's what how she interpreted the joke. Yeah. And so Dave uh, uh, gave a, a retraction on April 1st, but Ray claims it was broadcast much later in the show and was done in a sarcastic and arrogant manner. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, she never ever saw the Letterman show. Yeah, uh, Ray's yeah. attorney he said she was seeking fifty thousand in general damages and ten million in punitive damages on her behalf. Uh -huh. um, all the uh, quote uh, Ray quote Martha Ray's quoted 
all the implications are false and they were made with a reckless disregard for the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we know that she that she's a condom user, you know, I mean. Yeah, yeah. E. Jean Carroll is doing a better job of, uh, of that kind of lawsuit. Well, I mean, that, that yeah. that's a the lawsuit that E. Jean Carroll has isn't a, um, a frivolous lawsuit. And yeah, she's not a and, condom and, user. And, yeah, and, and the insult <laughs> was, was definitely in malice. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you, you, but with, with the satire, with this people like Letterman, you've really got to prove that any reasonable person would think she was promiscuous because of that <laughs> joke. And everybody uh, would say, no, the only thing I'm doing is laughing because he called her a condom user. Yeah. You know? uh, a judge watched a tape of the late night episode in Los Angeles, uh, the, the, the judges in L.A., uh, and issued a tentative ruling saying Ray was not defamed uh, and that he is inclined to dismiss the, the suit and a final ruling is forthcoming. I, I I don't have anything uh, more updated than that. Okay, well, we, since it's old news, we don't need more than that. But that pretty well. I don't find it. You'll find it, damn it. Huh? What? Were you going to say, Mark? 1986? Seven. Seven. 76. 87. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 87. 1987. Oh. So he was still at NBC when that was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I've never been sued. I've come close, but I've never been sued. Uh, who who almost sued me? And I I I did an apology, but I didn't want to. <laughs> it might have been Daniel Steele. I don't know, uh, but um, um, I've been very careful over the years, you know. And I've made some very salacious remarks about people, but uh, nothing that anybody could really sue me on. Um, and I don't. I, yeah, I did. I haven't literally I haven't had anything that went to court. Okay, you know. Was Howard Stern sued successfully? I don't know. I don't think he ever was sued, or if he, he was, was. Sure he, he was, was sued, sued a lot of times, but I don't think he ever ever yeah. had to pay. There were FCC fines for sure. Yeah. Oh well, FCC fines are different than you know than. Um, I mean, he was he was sued by the network when he started on Sirius. He had a bunch of lawsuits. Was it, he was sued when he started on Sirius? Yeah, there was some some issue about his uh, who owned the content that, that he'd created. Well, that's always what they call uh, uh, intellectual property, intellectual property. And, and Letterman could not, what, what couldn't Letterman do? He couldn't take. He, he couldn't use Larry Bud Melman as a, as a name character. He, uh, so, so he had to be referred to as Calvert. Calvert, Calvert DeForest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. CBS mailbag had to, uh, excuse me, the, the viewer yeah. mail had to be changed to CBS mailbag. Yeah. The top 10 list, they, they couldn't use top, they had to change it. It was just, I, I forget the reasoning or, or the outcome, but but the, there, there was some challenge over using the top, of, of continuing the top 10 list, but but he, he, but he did it anyway. He did anyway. Let, yeah. him, let him sue. You know. I found uh, uh, last uh, uh, a judge later dismissed the suit as a quote frivolous action, adding yeah. quote entertainers were fa fair game for kidding, no matter how tasteless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what it is. I'll tell you about about Sorry, people being able to sue. The higher up on the food chain you are, oh yeah, uh, the more difficult uh, it is uh, to be sued. Okay, but also. Uh, you could, they, people can sue you, but you can sue them too, and it can be somewhat frivolous. Well, that's uh, what Trump's doing. Trump's do, uh, suing. Uh, uh, um, for instance, I, I couldn't sue Donald and, Trump for saying something bad about me, uh, which E. Jean Carroll did. Mm -hmm. But when he was president, he could say anything he wanted to about me, and I could not sue him. Okay. But likewise, I could say anything about Donald Trump, and he can't sue me. That's that's the way that goes. Now, now that he's no longer president and the whole E. Jean Carroll thing wasn't about right now. It's about things he said about her. But the actual suit she had going was not about stuff he said about her, but about things oh, right. he did to her. Right. Right. Yeah. Before his presidency. Yeah. Before his presidency, too. But the higher up somebody is, 
the less they can sue, be, you know, less they can sue people for things that are said about them. That's why you don't hear about a lot of big movie stars who some magazine may say, you know, he rapes babies or something, and they don't sue because their their ability to sue is lessened by their fame. Because they're public property. Well, they're 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 a public figure and therefore subject to comment. Yeah. So. But uh, you'd well, have to what... prove you'd have to prove something in order to sue somebody uh, famous. I'm I'm not sure what what it is you'd have to prove. Well, you have to prove damages. You have to prove that it it somehow hurt you, right? Uh, and and that it was malicious. And that it was malicious. Yeah, malicious malicious is enough. Is the main part I think in that. If, if that was that that was a subject of the movie without malice uh, uh, or absent malice, right? Well, well the thing no. is that with with uh, with uh, 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 no. what, what am I? What were we talking about? Uh, with uh, <laughs> Sally uh, Field. And, I'm saying with absence of malice. Absence, absence, of, ma absence of malice. Absence, absence, absence of malice. malice. Absence yeah. of malice. Right. It, it was something like what Letterman did. Didn't have any malice in it at all. It was meant as a joke, mm -hmm. right? Because it was so it's such an outrageous joke, it could not possibly be true. Well, it, all that's the another thing they have to prove is that a reasonable human being would think that Martha Bray used condoms. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he was a puppet of big condom. So he was a puppet of big <laughs> condom. Right. God, I'm getting I'm forgetting what I'm saying in the middle of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that can go in a whole other direction. Well, I took the heavy pill last night, so I'm like, mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so anyway, what else is happening in this wonderful world of ours out there? God, it's just amazing. Um, the politics. Well, nah, they, they're not really <laughs> politics, just that the damn Supreme Court is just a pain in the ass, isn't it? Oh, it's mm -hmm. horrible. You know, uh, they're they going to get those voters out from the other side. Yeah, they made three decisions last week, and every one of them sucked. And there's another one coming out next week that's supposed to be bad. Of course, I've got this guy on our show. His name is Josh, and he is a, a Supreme Court scholar. Okay, he loves to study the Supreme Court and all of that. And I asked him about a couple of these decisions. He said the decision on the uh, on uh, affirmative action? Of, no, not affirmative oh, action. Student loan debt? Student, student loan, loan debt. Yeah. He said it was the only kind of decision they could have come out with because that is really forgiving that student loan debt since the actual student loan program was, uh, was created by Congress. Congress is the only one that can forgive the debt, he said. And so that was, that was a proper decision. Uh, we didn't get to the affirmative action. Oddly enough, we did that, and we, we were talking about the other thing last week uh, that happened, and uh, we forgot completely about the affirmative action, which is, you know, come on, you know, I, I want I want Charlie to be able to go to school for. <laughs> I want to be able to let him into. Alex Bent University. I wonder if he would have been able to get into Trump University. <laughs> Anybody Probably can not. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was... Uh, so... Did we have to pay back all those people that paid tuition? No. I got out of it? No? Some of them. Well, wait a minute. Some people already had their debt forgiven and didn't send in their check. Like I, I, was talking to, I was talking to um, uh, Charlie the other night, and he said he just got paid through paying off his last student loan. And I thought, Seriously. he's 80 years old. Come on. <laughs> you know? I mean, did it take him that long? Yeah. Then he said to me that it was, you were actually paying off your, uh, your... My parent loan for my kids' college. Yeah, yeah. but he's 80, and he's just paid that <laughs> off. Come on, look at look at Charlie. Yeah, let's do it for Charlie. Okay, <laughs> let's do it for let's Charlie. Let's make up a poster. Do it for Charlie. Yeah, do it for Charlie. How many here went to college? Uh huh. 
Uh-huh. I, I, I'm not raising my hand. I did, but for a couple, just about a year and a half. <laughs> uh, and uh, because I just, I didn't see any reason to continue college. I was already in the broadcasting business and I didn't want to take up the seat that somebody else could have, you know, and get good use out of it. I already had a career going, but uh, um, I, I, one thing I'm noticing, it's just getting to me. Len, you're sitting out in the sun a lot, aren't you? Yeah, we've been out a lot. I know. Yeah, we, uh, we were at the fair the other day. It was 108 degrees. Uh, we were in the pool all day yesterday. So yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, we've been doing some walking. I got a little color in my face, didn't I? Oh. Huh? <laughs> Where? Well, you're kind of beige. <laughs> well, I, I guess I have to go out more and do more walking in the sun. Um. But, you know, yeah. When? I wanted to ask you something. I, I, I watched uh, one of last week's ramble, <clears throat> and you said that you were uh, you were an ex-cop. No, 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 no that's Alan. That's oh, Alan. Alan. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Forget no. it. Yeah, I'm 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 not an ex-cop. No, 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 not Alex. Uh, Alan. 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 Yeah. Alan was an ex-cop. Yeah. Uh, he. Uh, he actually got some kind of a big awards and stuff. He was supposedly a very good cop, you know. Yeah. Now uh, he's a slumlord. <laughs> <laughs> owns an apartment, couple of apartment houses. He owns, he owns, he owns huh? several. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you know there's slums? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I I read a thing about the history of the building we're living in, man. At one point in the history of this building, they didn't have any heat for two years. And they had to get water from the fire hydrant. They had to get water from a fire hydrant on the street corner. Wow. And, uh, um, you know, a lot of people were getting sued about it. So, but what was the building like originally? Because I know yeah, it was how old is it? a very fancy building. Well, this, it was built this building 19, is 100, 100 by the Esther years. family, and it was for very wealthy Jews and their servants. And <laughs> then, they weren't really called apartment buildings, they were called stacked homes. Stacked. Yeah, that's really what they called them stacked homes because they weren't meant to be like this apartment here. It's not meant to be a, a apartment. They wouldn't call it an apartment. It's a home. And it really is. And if you were then to knock down the wall here where there's a door and it goes around to the other side, mm-hmm. you've, got one about, apartment. you've got about a six room uh, apartment here. Well, was it might it, it might it have been that once and 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 the and the the apartments were then partitioned into small. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. All of that. Absolutely. The room I'm in is kind of a disproportionate room to the rest of the rooms in the apartment house, in the apartment uh, place here. And uh, I think it's because the wall right in the ahead of me, which you can't see. It's probably, not a real was, wall. It's... Probably wasn't there. Yeah. You know, maybe, I can it, hear... maybe, it was, maybe it was servants' quarters. What do you think? No. Mm-hmm. Servants' quarters, servants quarters were on the, the on the, on the first and the second floor, I believe, of the building. Uh-huh. And they had a maid's quarter. We had a maid's quarter right here in our, you know, that place where we have a pantry? That was a maid's maid's quarter. quarter. You know if any famous people lived in your building? Besides Uh, yourself? Well, according to something I read yesterday, Alex Bennett lives here. I just did. (laughs) I'm accepting yourself. Um, Famous people. No, I don't know of any real historically famous people Mm -hmm. that lived here. But see, so the list had a few. Had Danny Glover. Glover had yeah. um, uh, Earl the Pearl Monroe, who's a basketball yeah. player, mm-hmm. and uh, Diana Ross's daughter has an apartment here. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Did, do you know Bill Evans, the piano player, jazz pianist? I know of him. Yeah, I'd learned that uh, he lived. Uh, this apartment building, which I, which is probably the same with every every other apartment building, uh, the vertical apartments are of the same design. Yeah, right. Um, Bill Evans lived in one of the apartments above me. Oh, really? Okay. So the is the same as the one below us, and the one below that is about the same. But as you get lower in the building, bottom of the building, the apartments get smaller because they're, they're like they're like four doors instead of three doors. 
And they were that way because they were using them as uh, servants quarters. So the people that had the fancy homes up here, all the servants lived down below. And they still have the, um, the horses were kept in the basement. They still have the, what are they called? They put the horses in. The we, we still have, Mar Marjorie doesn't know, but we still have a, uh, uh, I think her rug is covering it, a hole in the floor. Yeah, where I know. Was, where, where there was a bell. Yeah, and, of and if I were sitting I there, I would not know place. that. There was also two apart, two two elevators uh, to an apartment. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the elevators. But the, forget about that part of it. it where you, the person who was eating, uh, you know, you wanted something from mm -hmm. a mate, you just ring it with your foot. Uh, and uh, so there was a lot of that here. Um, but all the lights and everything were gas in the beginning because this was built when gas was you know, gas fireplace. Gas fireplace, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, it's it's, uh, it's a building with a great deal of history. Yeah, uh, and uh, it's just a shame because I I, see, I don't often had a, a a what can I call it a a dream that I would win the big money um, lottery, and then I'd be able to buy this apartment house. But you already won the lottery because with because you found Marjorie. Oh, there geez. you go. Oh, there you God. go. Don, you want her? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this apartment house has just got this full of history, and it should be, it be very nice. The courtyard needs to be fixed up. It needs to be redone and stuff like that. It's a beautiful, beautiful apartment house, and the people who own it don't care. They just don't care. People that rent it do. And the people who rent it absolutely do. There's yeah. some people who have done very nice things with their apartments. The people next door to us spend a hundred thousand dollars of their own money. Of their own money, turn this thing into it looks it looks like it's brought back to its old luster. You know, yeah, they've got something like a hundred year lease. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the what's the turnover? Is there low turnover? Low, There's low very turnover. little turnover. Yeah. yeah. Well, but and the rent, of the rent control, of which is only about sixty left, um, people were born in here that that are parents and have children mm -hmm. in here now. Yeah, and they well, inherit the stabilized. Apartment. Yeah, you could inherit the, the apartment. You can't do that with rent stabilized, but rent no, control, rent control you can pass it down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So really nice, you know. We we love our apartment house. It's got great history here built by the Astors before they drowned on the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> pretty nice, pretty nice. Anyway, so anyway, how are you doing, Andrew? What have you been doing? Me, I've been working in Maryland and coming back home every couple of weeks. I'm in Ohio today. Yeah, yeah. So and doing that six never, hour commute. How come you never leave that room? This, <laughs> this is, I'm almost never here. This is a background Wait, hold on. Let me let me see if I can show you where I actually am here. Here we go. Here's the here. probably looks at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Canada. <laughs> I was going to say probably without the without the blue screen or the green screen, it probably looks like Giller's apartment. Yeah, this is a this is a background too. You know, this is what <laughs> you've been there since. What? When did you say you first moved in there? Who me? Mm -hmm. uh, 79 79 you've been there since 79 that's how many years uh six um 40 <laughs> 40 44 yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much you're in bed in bed <laughs> into that. Is that better yeah. Hold on. <laughs> oh boy uh, you're, so you're pretty much embedded into that apartment. I mean, you're. Oh yeah, I mean the 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 the, the it, as you say, st uh, rent stabilized. I I could not afford to go anywhere else. Do the owners of the place hate you because you won't move out and they can't then redo it and raise the price on the rent? In fact, I'd, I've been wanting to rent. A, a, there are a number of vacant apartments in the building, and I wanted to rent another one so I could store all my crap in there. Yeah, uh, but it, it, it's they're not on the market. I'm told because I think they're they're gradually wanting to change these into condominiums. 
Yeah. Hmm. Either that or they do that. Boy, I'm telling you, Deutsch. I will never I will never ask about your background again. <laughs> I have my eye on you. <laughs> it's a whole show right there. <laughs> this is a little production studio in my this office is, here. This is a program that you sell, right? I used to. Yeah, I just just how people people can use it. We oh. shut down the site about a year and a half ago. What is your software? Yeah, it was it was a instructions on how to use open source software. It's all there's no there's no cost to it. You yeah. just got to set up the, the equipment. Yeah, right. And if you misbehave every once in a while, it'll 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 teach you something. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you sell it to? Oh, we sold thousands of people on the on this the online course. People signed up yeah, for it. You had an online course, and yeah. that was the backgrounds and stuff like that. No, they, you get your own. Most of these are just things, green screen videos that I took off of different places and make them work. Yeah, so you stole but them. You stole them. No, they're all open, open source. Oh, okay. Open. I, I don't. I don't take anything that I don't know. Yeah, but well, you know, should. I went. I went for the first time, Alex, in in four years to go see a live concert in in Maryland. Mm -hmm. The opening act was, I'm not going to say the name, I don't want to get, get sued for condom stories, but the worst opening act I've ever seen in my life. And I was getting so fed up, I was about to turn to my buddy who was with me and say, this is the worst staffing thing I've ever. And at that moment, the singer on the stage, the rapper, whatever the hell he was, it had nothing to do with the main, says, this is my first time in my hometown playing and I'm inspired because today my brother is in the audience and this next one goes out to him. He points right at me. Jeez. The lights come right on me. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? I was just about to absolutely just unload about what a miserable effing show. His brother was standing right in front of him with three three guys from the hood. One second more, oh, I'd have been beaten to a pulp. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was classic. I was, I mean, I was just about to unleash. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it was it was awful. And then the real act came on. It was one of the best shows I've I've seen in 20, 30 years. Oh, who, who was the uh, who was the act? A band called Eels. They're a, a rock band called Eels. Yeah. They're fantastic. If you ever get a chance to listen to them, you'd like them. I'm an old man. I'm 83. What do I know from the Eels? You'd like them. E -E They're really good. Huh? E E L S. Yeah. We, we watch we watch TMZ. I think they were on Letterman once, the Eels. We watch TMZ every time we eat dinner. We we have it recorded and we watch TMZ. I have no idea why, because we don't know any. Yeah. I'm the same way. You know, and, but, and then they'll talk for five minutes about this person. Yeah. And Marjorie and I are going, have you ever heard of this person in your life? Who are they? Yeah. The best, the best thing about these rappers is they keep explorers alive because it's, it's, there's lots of things that rhyme with Magellan. <laughs> <laughs> Five times the, eel, the eels were on five times on, on yeah the show. wow yeah on, on Letterman yeah, yeah. From 2000 to 20, 2011. I told you he's crazy. See, <laughs> me or Letterman? <laughs> Mention a group I've never heard of in my life, and I knew I used to play music. I used to listen. I was a big music guy. I never heard of the eels. They're super creative. You I found out you were he was on Letterman how many five times? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're, they're as close to mainstream as I listen to. They're really I, good. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if these song titles will mean anything to you. Fly Swatter, Saturday Morning, Trouble with Dreams. Oh, now that you Fly say dreams. that, Nova <laughs> came for the soul. Boy, all of them. You're you're laughing at me. I can tell. Oh, no. I, I'm not done. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. You can find this because you have lists, right? Databases. Databases. Yeah. And you can find this. Do you know who the eels are? <laughs> Have you ever run any of them on your on your podcasts and stuff that you put up here? I don't. Um, a couple of years ago, someone asked me if I could put together a compilation of all of the fish appearances. Now I can't stand fish. I know who fish is, by the way. Yeah, they're, they're good they're, with tartar sauce. They're dead wannabes. <laughs> Yeah, they're dead wannabes. You're yep. absolutely yeah. right. And the, the 
the fish heads or the whatever they call them. That was Burns yeah. and Burns. I want to I want to be deadheads I, because I've known a few of them. You know, we I had a I had a, uh, a board op at Sirius XM who's a big fish fan. Right. And so I I said I it I can't I I didn't do it because I I could I don't think I could stand it's it's like prostituting yourself. Yeah, I just I couldn't do it. And you I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, use, a, uh, use a condom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, Paula, have you ever heard of fish? Not only have I never heard of fish, I'm still ruminating on fly swatter by the eels. What, what? <laughs> it's a classic. That, that's a song. Yeah. <laughs> that's... It was on. It was on the uh, the second album. Nova oh. came for the soul was the hit off the first one. That's why, Paul, it's the second album. Yeah, you didn't hear yeah, it. You only know the first. Yeah, well, I, I, it, it's, uh, it's interesting that we're talking about the eels and fish. I mean, is there anything that isn't submersive? Uh, <laughs> there was the Tube Sushi Girl song. That was good. <laughs> Apparently that submarine. <laughs> I love the Tubes. They're one of the best bands ever. Yeah. Still alive. The who? The Tubes. <laughs> Well, you, the who's another band they're on first <laughs> they're on first hey why bill was that the, that was the guy's name hey way bill yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah they, they still like, tour they come to on cleveland like, once a uh, year twice. in akron oh sorry yeah, they're gonna be here soon too yeah the title of today's program is groups you never heard of <laughs> <laughs> the tubes oh, were uh, pretty big if you lived in san francisco you oh know yeah the tubes were white punks on dope yeah bondo bondage yeah yeah. yeah, no, no. Waybill was on late night uh, a couple times. I yeah, guess. and I, I put them up. They're they're on YouTube. Okay, here's one of my favorite groups of all time. Oingo Boingo. Oh yeah, Danny Elfman. Oh, one time we're called the Mystic Knights of the Oingo Boingo when they well, started. You know what they're talking about? Oingo Boingo, great band. They're making it up. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened to Oingo Boingo. It was started by a guy who then started writing. Uh, m music for movies. Yep. And his name was Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Wow. He's the guy who did all the Batman, all the Tim Burton movies are Danny Elfman compositions. Yeah. But uh, El Elfman does movie music all the time now. That's exclusively what he does. Yep. He yeah, put out his first solo thing. album last year, that I think in like 12 years of yeah. new music. Did he do the Simpsons theme? Yep. Yeah. No, did he do the Simpsons theme? I yep. guess he did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he only gets he only gets uh, money for it because it's his voice going The Simpsons. Oh, okay, but he didn't get any money just because uh, he created the song. Some there's some something about the song because the, the royalties, but the fact that he's the, the voice going The but Simpsons. Publishing rights are almost everything, not voice rights. Because yeah, I don't know, I, I mean, heard him interviewed once. He was talking I'm about sure, it. I'm sure that. Uh, you know, uh, Don knows that he probably can't run any Letterman music, right? But you uh, do I can't do anything. You can't do anything. Can't if you put, put up all any the additional uh, uh, Dave owned or licensed content, but before that, I was yeah. No, I've, I've got a lot of music that the music publishers can choose to either ignore or monetize or block. Mostly that usually they just monetize. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no problem. Did you ever put up all the Tom Waits appearances on Letterman? Yeah, I did. Yeah, those yeah, were great. So you're not adding any new stuff to YouTube now? No, no Dave related stuff. No Dave. What are you doing now? Who? Um, I'm if putting you're, up if stuff. You're put, if you're putting up rambles, you, you, you just lose. It's always because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> how, how can I split? You know, twenty views into ten views each. Yeah, um, right. Uh, I've been putting. Uh, a friend of mine, a college friend of mine, and I uh, play, wrote, and played music for decades, and so we're putting, we're making music videos of that stuff when we're putting that up. Yeah. Okay. All cool. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Sure. I, um, and uh, uh, the, I, I can put up Tonight Show appearances, um, and they're they're oh, the the Carson people are okay as long as it's over the air content rather than from their licensing site. Do you, do you, have, then, access, do you have access to all of the Carson stuff? Um, or, I, I, I have. Because I did I go to a taping once a long time ago. I'd be interesting to see it. And a buddy of mine yesterday was telling me 
he got called down to the audience to tell a story or something and was on the show back 25 years ago. So just wondering. Do you have a date? I'll see if I have it. All right. I don't, I don't have the date. I will find it, though. I'll, I'll okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've got a lot of Carson from the licensing site. Um, and in fact, uh, in 2019, I, I had put up every uh, Letterman appearance, guest appearance on the Carson show, but I used the I used the content from their licensing site, and that was a no-no, and that, that they blocked. In fact, they, they took it down, and I lost the channel, but mm. I, I pleaded with them, and, and, and through their good graces, they said, okay, we'll rescind the strikes as long as you take them down, and I said, okay, and I did. Wow. Um, oh, okay. It's interesting. I don't understand what the difference is. I mean, we haven't got time now, but between taking it off the air and taking it off their site, I mean... Um, Isn't it the same material? It's yeah. I, I I won't speak for them. It's it's their content. They can do what they want. So in other words, if you go to some place that's running the Carson shows, and you record it, you can use that. Yeah, in fact, I mean Antenna TV, I, which I don't watch anymore. Uh, uh, they aired a lot of Carson shows, and and I've seen a lot of Antenna TV because of, because of Watermark. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that they're they're legitimately on there. But but uh, not from the licensing site. That's that's a no no. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's all it, it, it. Believe me, it's a world of legal hassles. That's all it is now. Yeah. yeah. And, and Don Geller, because he's a great archivist, so far as I'm concerned, or archivist, um, uh, really deserves to be able to do anything he goddamn well wants to do because he's preserving content. He's preserving history. But I don't have enough faith in myself as a human being. <laughs> That's right. But I'm here to give you faith in yourself. Because oh, you're un under the thumb of Big Condom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thumb of Big Condom. Hey, listen, we're, we ran over here. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today, Andrew. Nice to have you here. Paula, always a pleasure to have you here. Marjorie Miller, eh, not so much. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Len LaFrisco, you're wonderful. Uh, Charlie, good for you. And Jeff, you know, we got to get together sometime soon. I know it's it's going to be that time of the year where we get sure is. And Don sure. Geller, we will get together if I can ever get you out of the house. Yeah, don't count on it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye. <laughs> oh, oh. And <laughs> see, what happens is I skip over him for this particular purpose, and then I forget. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our program. <laughs> All it's point. brought to an end by Edward Berger, who says... That's all, folks. <laughs> There's Edward. Thanks, Edward. I appreciate it. Okay. You. Glad Thanks. I didn't forget. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody.